Okay, so uh, <clears throat> continuing with Shema. So we saw, let's just recap. We saw that Shema Yisrael Hashem Elkeinu Hashem Echod is the first purpose is to unify Hashem. And that is a three level unification, right? Hashem is the source. Hashem is the current guide and control. And Hashem is the, the end result, the future. Mm -hmm. Right. We also saw that that uh, it's Kabbalah of Malchus Shemaim, which is the same thing, right? Unification of Hashem and accepting Him as King is one thing, right? Because if He's one, then everything is under His control, right? Mm -hmm. We also saw that for accepting Him as King is really a downgrade for Him, mm -hmm. right? And He so He because He allowed Himself to be viewed as our King. So, therefore, he's kind of dependent on us, mm -hmm. right? We also saw that, that on one hand, um, Hashem's presence... All right, we also saw that, that part of the unification must include evil, right? Right? Because evil is included in Hashem Echad, that evil is allowed to exist, on the one hand. On the one hand, meaning on the other hand, evil only exists because Hashem's unity is not fully revealed. Mm -hmm. Right? Once it's fully revealed, then, that e then, then even that evil that is allowed to, be ex mm -hmm. to, to exist for now is also removed. So therefore, by us declaring Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekein Hashem Echad, we are ever slowly... Um, bringing that re removal of mm -hmm. evil closer, right? And even though Hashem established that, right, that all of these blessings in the future will, will you know, will, will, will eventually appear, and the revelation of Hashem's oneness will eventually happen, but by He wants that to occur through human effort. So we have this sense of we're pu pushing a moving train. Right? But at the same time, even though we're pushing a moving train, we are given the schar as if we are, you know, we, we are actually pushing the train. Right? So all of that, all of that is included in Shema Yisrael Hashem Malakein Hashem Echad. Right? The, the, the basic kavonas that a person should have when he says these, these things. Okay? Okay, let's continue. Uh, and we already explained in, in, in the first section that the perfection, the true perfection, shall have Briya of, of the creation, who he moshech lo is is that it it connect not connects but it brings down. It, it cloaks itself, I would say, that would be a better translation, it cloaks itself in the perfection of Hashem, right? Ki hu hashlemus, because he is the only perfection, right? When we say, oh, mm -hmm. a person, this, this is perfect, we don't really mean this is perfect, because there's no such thing as perfection. The only thing that is perfection is God's perfection that we don't really even understand. Right, the ulam, however, gamze mitoldes ha mitzvah hazois. This is also an outcome of this mitzvah. Shebehaideinu al yichudai. When we testify about Hashem's oneness, ubi yoseinu toyli mesakoyl boy. And when we thereby to us. Vinimza lekol abriya shemishtalim b'shleimusa. And as a result. The entire per creation is 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 perfected with his perfection. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if it makes sense, but basically, it sounds like what he's saying is, it sounds like what he's saying is that part of us attaching when we say Hashem is Shmaiyus, Hashem Alkeinu, Hashem Achod, therefore we make the entire creation being an outgrowth, so to speak, of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So once it becomes an outgrowth of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, then it also achieves perfection. Mm -hmm. Because he is the only thing that's perfect. So, the closer that that we come to him, the closer we are mimicking him. The closer we are mimicking him, the, the more perfection we borrow from him. 
right? That's different, meaning is adding a new layer that I don't think was here before. Is, meaning before he was talking about... The conversation was Friday? Um, one second, he... So, I mean, there's two, there's two, what, what he's now adding is that there are two, I think what he's adding is that there are two, um, there are two ways perfection is ach achieved, a bottom up and a top, and a, and a, and a top down, right? Mm -hmm. So, and they're really the same, it's two sides mm -hmm. of the same coin, but ultimately, meaning the first he was talking about that the closer that we come to Hashem, right, the more perfection that we achieve because we are, the only way... Meaning the only way that we are coming closer to Akash Baruch is because we are becoming more similar like him and we're becoming more perfect. That's mm -hmm. the bottom-up approach, right. right? The other approach is that by us attaching ourselves to him, we are now more connected right. to his perfection. And so that perfection kind of falls into our lap, so to speak. And we get, we get mm -hmm. to, because we can never really achieve perfection. So everything that we're doing is anyways nonsense. But by doing these things, we're kind of saying, you know, we want to be perfect like you, so, you know, throw some perfection our way. Okay, here, fine. Mm -hmm. Right? So, those are just two, again, he's just he's saying that both of these accomplishments are achieved through Shema. Right? We're bringing the world closer to, to perfection, mm -hmm. because the elimination of evil is a step in the, towards perfection. Right? And Shema Yisrael Shemakein Hashem Echad says, in the future, the evil will be removed. Bringing closer to 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 perfection, from you know from our perspective, and then finally the fact that we're saying hey, and therefore everything is God's, right? And everything we're totally on God, so we are also making our everything God-like, and so again full full to perfection. Okay, fine. Next la next layer, a, a new layer, a next layer. Okay, so let's see. Paragraph hey, vehine mitanai ha mitzvah zois. And a condition, very interesting, again, condition mm -hmm. of this mitzvah. What is the condition of this mitzvah? You have to meet that condition in order for it to be a mitzvah. That's what it sounds like. A condition means, tanai means it's a condition. So what is what What can possibly be, what, what's, do, you, do you know of any conditions of a mitzvah of Shema? Can you think of any conditions? Time. Time, besides time. If you say Shema in the afternoon, it's also Shema. No, but it's not. Mitzvah. It's not the mitzvah. Okay, but here, so here we go. So here's, from the conditions of this mitzvah, li yois ha'odom, that a person should be goimer bedaito, he conclude and kind of set permanently in his mind, lim sar nafshoi al yehudoi is borach, to sacrifice his life for the unification of Hashem's name. Okay? So that's a condition. I mean, we know that you know, right? We know that in the art school, if you see that a person is supposed to think when he's saying Shema, that you know he's be, he'll be willing to you know to die okay, the Hashem, right? We say we have to Hashem lokecha b'chol v'chol or v'chol nafshecha, right? Even so, again, these are two different things. That also, I think, is a common misconception. If I, maybe I'm wrong, but I always think that it's a common misconception. Let me see if art school agrees with me. When we say the Gemara says in that even if Hashem takes your life, right? So that pasuk is saying that your love for Hashem should be so strong to the point of Mesiras Nefesh. That's mitzvah v'ahavas Hashem. That's separate from what it, what it says over here. That in Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekein Hashem Echod, a person has to think that he is if had you know if a circumstance would arise, he'd be willing to give up his life for God. Those are not the same thing, right? Uh, one has to do with love of Hashem, mm -hmm. or one has to do specifically with Yichud Hashem. Okay, right? And so why why is that why is that here? Why is that important? Why should you think about? First, why is the condition? He makes it even stronger. You, we know, okay, you're supposed to think about it. You're supposed to think about it. Where do, I'm just going to see, where does art school put it in?
So I don't see Art Scroll putting it in. I don't see Art Scroll putting it in in Shema. I see Art Scroll pu putting it in. You mean the commentaries? Or well, anyway, and um, in the Hafta, Art Scroll puts it in in the commentaries. In the Hafta. Right? And that's it. It does not say over here. As you're saying these words, concentrate that you'd be willing to get, you know. For some reason, I thought he, they did do that, but I don't see it. Am I blind? It says, and concentrate intensely upon accepting God's absolute sovereignty. That is all it says here. Okay. Anyway, so let's see. Let's see. Um, so Leo is going to so commit. Anyway, so that, let's continue. continue? Yeah. Okay, so there's another chidush here, and that is a, it's a halachic chidush that is taking place here. Mm -hmm. And the halachic chidush is, is a person obligated to give up one's life for Hashem's unity? And that's not is so he simple. Obligated or is, yeah, he... is, this, is there halacha that one is obligated to give up one's life for Hashem's unity? The answer is not so simple. We know that a person is obligated to give up one's life for Avayi but there is, for some, again, maybe you would have said, whatever is not unity of Hashem is, is Avedu Zara. And whatever is not Avedu Zara is unity of Hashem. There is no middle ground. But possibly there is a middle ground. Mm -hmm. Meaning, is Christianity Avedu Zara? It's, it's an old machloikas. I don't know much about it, but I know there's a machloikas. Is Christianity considered Avedu Zara? Right? Not everybody believes that it is considered Avedu Zara. And everybody believes that it is, it isn't, it is, whatever, machloikas, right? Because somehow maybe it's just a distortion of Hashem's unity. But maybe Trinity is not Avoid Zara. It's just not unity, because unity means one, not three, right? Mm -hmm. But but maybe it's not Avoid Zara. Right? So according to some interpretations, possibly Christianity is not Avoid Zara. Right? Mm -hmm. But according to the Ramchal, clearly that's not the case. Because Goimer Bedai to Limser Nafshal Yehuda means for any distortion of Hashem's unity, you would, you know, you should give up, you should give up your life, right? Because you have to be Ligmer Dai you have to know that if, should should the situation arise, right? Should the situation arise that uh, that mm. something going against Hashem's unity, I should be, you know, I should be willing to sacrifice my life. And that's a that's a tonight. Nice, that's his. As a condition, we'll see what we'll see what see what he says about that. Let's see. Further, he says, Not only that, not only to die, but even to uh, receive any sort of yisurim, any sort of uh, um, affliction, right? Any sort of suffering, which Taisa says in Gemara Subas, I believe it's in Gemara Subas, is more difficult. Mm -hmm. It's easier to die for Hashem than it is to mm -hmm. accept a lot of suffering. You know, torture is is more mm -hmm. difficult than death. Mm -hmm. Okay, umine misa, and all sorts of death, death, al kiddush is barach, for the sanctification of Hashem's name. V'nech shavloi, not only that, he should think, ki ilu osa dover bepoil, as if he already did the thing. Right? Not only should he do, should he think that should the situation arise, I'd be willing to do it? No. I did it. And I already killed, I was killed. I was already killed for Kiddush Hashem. Okay. And as a result of this, also come out great consequences for the benefit of the creation and for the rectification of the whole, of the whole, general rectification. Okay? Let's see that. I can explain. Now he's going to explain. Now his explanation is going to be long and repetitive. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure if I... Okay. V'zeh. And this is. Shemisidri achach mahal yoyna. From the organization that the great wisdom set up. B'nivroim u'b'metziyo In the creations 
and then they're very in the different states, right? That each, everything that exists, exists in a certain level, a certain appropriate state. Okay? Mm-hmm. Right? So it's a state, meaning it could be, could have existed in a different state. But Hashem said, you know what? You're going to exist at this state. Whatever the great wisdom measured out. It was appropriate. Whatever was de- desired for the world and its condition, its state. And this level, what's the point? I Meaning, why, why should everything be leveled? Why shouldn't you maximize? In other words, what he's saying, why can't we just maximize everything to the fullest? Mm-hmm. Right? The answer is, this is a level, that should provide a, a, a place for darkness, to exist. Vula tuma lehispashet, and for the in, uh, tuma to to spread out, vulipol, and to do its thing. Okay, amnam kol zeh b'shiur noida. Each everything, however, in great precision. Right, the high nu shulayim tzah choishech vulaytish leit a tuma kol kach that it can't be that the darkness and the tuma should have such power. She itame lo oylam legamre that it should defile the world completely. Viskal kolo habriyos. And the creations would be completely um, destroyed. I don't know, I just don't know the word, corrupted. Okay? Because if we get to that level, then you'd have to destroy everything and to erase it all. Which really occurred at the time of the flood. Right? So, so you got to have some darkness in the world, but you got to figure it out a way that the darkness should have a limit. Mm-hmm. Right, that should only go that far. Um, right, ach b'shiur mashul yikul kol ha'olam. Only in the measure that the world should not be corrupt, completely destroyed. Aval yisharu bohein yonim choil v'loy kodesh, but there should be uh, elements of choil, right, of of mundane, of right, v'loy mm-hmm. kodesh, not holy, chashuchim, dark, dark, v'loy behirim, and not bright. This should be the level that is first and that is essential. Amnam, however, should be there. So that's the level. So now any level that's achieved on top of that is considered an additional level, right? It's like extra credit, meaning it's, it's right? Meaning it's not the basic level, it's the extra level, right? So Amnam should be in a way of tesefes, in a way of addition, timotzi bom ha'orah me'ulo behashpoas yokar. Yukar. There, ha, there can be achieved a, a level of brightness and an influence of, of elevation. Yisalu bo mina madrega ashfol ha'zois, so that we, the creations could be lifted from this lower level, ve'yagil lebruim inyan koidosh u'behirus. And so they, the creations can achieve an element of, of sanctity and, a, and brightness. Whatever is also, you know, maximum possible, but within this world. All of this is measured out with great wisdom. Each thing in its proper gvul, proper measure. Less, not more. Hashem first measured out what should be the proper measure in a ikr, in, in, a, in their primary essential form. And, and even that is divided into many layers and levels, and right, and parts. And what, and, and, and also what can they achieve in a way of additions, and it's also divided into many divisions and many levels. And also the times are measured out. That some times are more elevated than others. Like we will describe later, I meaning when he talks about Shabbos and Moedos, then he'll explain that there are certain times that are more infused with brightness, mm-hmm. right? and certain times that are less infused with, with brightness. Right? Okay, so what's that got to do with us? We still don't know. Right? We just know that 
And we didn't learn anything new. We just know that Hashem created the world with the possibility of darkness to exist. And that's called the essential madrega. And we learned that there is a, there is a madrega that's called, that could be above that. And that's called an additional madrega. Okay. Now every day, Hakadosh Baruch Hu renews the hashpo and the haora, the the influence and the the enlightenment in the creations. Shitale or some min a madrega hashpo or hashroshis behem veitn behem kiddush behirush kimoshu zechar. They that he um he they they leave they leave this root madrega, this lower madrega, and they will achieve an additional level of sanctity and enlightenment. The ulam sidra chokma, the wisdom did organized. Aliyahinu metzius ha'ora hazois. That the nature of this enlightenment, which hamischazekas umeaveres hachoyshech shala oilam, that strengthens and removes the darkness from the world, umagberes boy and overpowers it. Ubibruyev, I'm sorry, Ubibruyev Hayakar, and strengthens in the creations the Yakar, the elevation, Vamaila, another elevation, Vagdusha, and holiness, Shuzacharno, Vitosa, I'm Sheikh of Ima, I say Hatachtoni. So this, this infusion of an addition, of additional level in the creation can only come. Through the acts of the of of the lower beings, right? Meaning of, of people, just like any other hashpo and rectification. Mm. One second. Not sure. Okay. I mean, I, I think I know what he's saying, but I don't really understand what he's saying. But anyway, so he's saying he's saying that let's let, right. So he's saying there's a track, there's a track B and there's a track A. Track B is your standard state, and track A is your elevated state, mm -hmm. right? And you could switch from track B to track A, right? And so who makes that switch? Who makes the switch? People. He says everything that happens, everything that's uh, besides the gradual things that we improve, improve uh, the world in our actions. There is just another thing called the switch, and the switch says we're going to switch from track B to track A, right? And that's a separate thing that can be achieved, but also achievable. Like any uh, any perfection is achieved through human mm -hmm. human intervention. So this switching mechanism from track A to track B, or from track B to track A, is also achieved through through humans. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the Amnam, so good. Good. The Amnam Hamase, the action, Asher Tuluya boy, upon which depends this. This switch mechanism, what mm -hmm. is the action which accomplishes the switching mechanism? Who Mesor Odom is the sacrifice is, that a person makes for the sanctification of Hashem's name. Mm -hmm. The bigger the sacrifice, the more. So, the, for mm -hmm. some reason, again, I'm not sure why, but for some reason, the sanctification, the right dying for, us, for God, so to speak, right? Dying Al Kiddush Hashem. Is attached to that action besides the great, the great, uh, you know, Kiddush Hashem. It's called Kiddush Hashem, right? But that Kiddush Hashem accomplishes not only that, 
Kiddush Hashem, or maybe it's the same thing. It, it mm -hmm. accomplishes the switch from the standard darkness to the more sanctified and uplifted existence. Right? So it's like a... It's like steroids. Steroids yeah. for, for yeah, perfection. It propels him in that world. Not pro the pro propels the world. Oh. Propels the world. Right? He, he achieves this... Victim. Right. Okay, so let's let's see a little more. Um, so yeah, but again, I'm reading. I'm not my master. Shall tell you, boy, who this the action upon who this which this hangs? Who Messiah Adam is now showing Al Kiddush Moiz Baruch is is by him sacrificing his nefesh, his life for the sanctification of Hashem's name. The gam beze yesh madregos, and of course, there's also levels in this. The actual sacrifice of, of his life for the sanctification of Hashem's name will bring down a great light and is very strong. And there will be a great rectification in the creation. And the and the, the sanctification and the brightness will will be great, you know, will be will be increased very much. That's that's one level, right? The actual sanctification. Mm -hmm. But a sancti uh, sacrifice in thought, right? A theoretical sacrifice, the high no ligmor is just to uh, to conclude in one's heart to do this. To do this, to give up one's life, will also bring down an influence of this sort. Of course, it's not going to be as strong as as the actual physical, practical sacrifice. However, since this act needs to be accomplished daily, right? You have the, during the switching between the night and the day, and the switching between the day and the night, right? When the, when mm -hmm. Hashem switches those times, then a, a person has the ability to also switch yeah. the creation from track B to track A. So for that switch, since since the, since the switch is already taking place, right? There's a chidush, right? There's a chidush of, of Hashem's uh, bria that's taking place in the world. So his ability, his thought of giving up his life accomplishes the switching mechanism during that time. Right? And this is done in, again, Pasuk Shema, not in Pasuk Vahavta. In, in the Pasuk Shema, the, the result of this is bringing down this influence of sanctification, and brightness of Bria Kula in the entire creation. It gives it a little bit of elevation from the mundane and from the darkness, which is implanted into it according to its basic. Um, you know, uh, what's the word? Status quo level, mm -hmm. the level, the starting le starting level. Okay. So let's just think about this together. What what is he saying? I mean, he's saying big words. Uh, <clears throat> that the death so, for Hashem is much bigger than the life for Hashem. That's what it sounds like. All right. I, so I think what I think it's it's saying is is different. I think it's saying is is that Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad. Like maybe to the to the extreme level of Nefesh Chaim. If you remember when we learned Nefesh Chaim, it's really Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad means there is no world, mm -hmm. right? If God is one, then there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, 
there is this magic, meaning, I don't know how to say it, but meaning why, why are carbonas so important in the Jewish world? Because carbonas is, is, what I understand is, is a vicarious misa, right? I die when I bring a carbon. Or the animal dies in my stead. Mm -hmm. In other words, like we see, Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, you cannot see me and live. Right? Mm -hmm. You cannot see me and live. Right? When the when Klaus Roll went by Har Sinai, what happened? They all died. Mm -hmm. Right? In other words, in other words, the final connection to Akkadj Baruch Hu is death. Meaning, any time a person is still alive in this physical world, that is a a blockage. That's a separation between con him connecting with Hashem, right? Which is also why sh the last thing that the person says when he dies is Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. This is right. Yotzef we say that his life went out with the word Echad. Like that's that's a step. That's like a a thing, right? Is that is that Right, so we try what we're trying to achieve with this, with this willingness to give to die, right? And that's why he also sp spells it out, not just the willingness to die. He says, and you should imagine it as if it already took place, right? In other words, we're trying to to as we say, dance right? We're trying to dance and to, we're trying to be to live and die at the same at the same time. We're trying to achieve that at that elevation. That is only possible in what would you know the the, the Lubavitchers call you know bitul mm. you know self complete self effacement right um, while still being you know fully kicking and functioning right so that's that's what I that's that's the idea and that's why I think that's why says it's a switching mechanism meaning it's more than just a regular hashpo regular I put on tefillin. I elevate the world, right? I, I learn Torah, I elevate the world. I, you know, I put in mezuzah, I elevate the world. Everything is, is an elevation. But over here, this is more than just an elevation. This is a complete, I'm, I'm changing the world from its physical state into its almost like, so to speak, its non-existent state. The complete, the complete opposite of a physical world. Right. Right. So therefore, I'm living on this level where you know, I'm destroying the physical world to create a better world, right? Vicarious, again, this is in theory, in theory. And he he takes a little bit interesting, I mean, it's not interesting for you, because if you look at the Gemara, right, there's a, where do we know, where do we learn all of this? What's our, where do we learn these ideas? We learn these ideas from the story of Rabbi Akiva, right? Mm -hmm. The story of Rabbi Akiva was that, you know, he was, the Romans said, don't learn term, they can't not learn term, no. so they arrest him. So then they take and they 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 sacrifice him. Uh, uh, I mean, they sacrifice them. They mm. they they uh, can um, sentence him to die, right? And he says, "Shema Israel." He was that was Zman Kriyushma, and he said, "Shema," and he died. And Talmudim says, "You know what's going on?" So he says, and the, post, the the Gemara says that I was worried. Should this mitzvah come to me, will I will I be able to fulfill it? Now that it's, now that I have it, well, I'm not going to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like, from the reading of the Gemara, uh, is that is that he wanted, like there was there's an there's an element of him wanting to die out of the not just. I mean, I just I just said it not the, really the way Gemara says, but basically there's a, there's, there's the, 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 there are different ways to read the Gemara, but one of the ways to read the Gemara is that he, this is something that he wanted to do. So this is something like oh. To be able to die al kiddush Hashem, ooh, that's 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 great, that's great. So that's why he's he's basing himself of that gemara. That mm -hmm. you know, at least in the way we're learning that, the other way of learning the gemara is that this is something that's 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 a goal. It's a goal, right? Oh. To 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 for yeah. the opportunity to yeah. die al kiddush yeah. Hashem. It's a, it's not a, it's a, I don't know how to say it. It's a hard to say it as a goal, but it's 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 not just. I don't know, again, I'm not sure how to say it, but, right, okay, yes, no, mm -hmm. the question is, is it a condition, is it a oh. condition, 
I don't know if he really means it's a condition. Does, does that because I can't it can't it can't mean it's a condition because a condition really no, means I, I can understand the consequence. Condition means that if I didn't think about no, no, you know no, that no. I'm not yes of course I mean that, that can't be right that can't be it can't be that if I didn't think about being uh, dying for Hakadosh Hashem so I'm not yet to the mitzvah of creation of course I'm yet to the mitzvah of creation. The question is meaning that he probably means from the tanai of fulfilling this mitzvah fully. Right, of fully appreciating what does it mean, Shema Yisrael Hashem Okay, Hashem Echod. Okay, not Ve'ahavta. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's not part of Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta is a different story. You have a love for Hashem that will take you even, so even if you're being killed, you're going to say, I love Hashem because I know that whatever Hashem does is good for me and I love Hashem. That's like, a, that's a, that's a one mitzvah. This is a different mitzvah. This is a, my appreciation of what it really means, Hashem Echod. What it really means that Hashem is one. And I'm willing to, you know, what it mean really means to connect with the Kaddish Baruch Hu on a, on a very deep level. That's right. a different. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. The tanai of a mitzvah, meaning that it, a tanai of the of this full mitzvah, of fully appreciating this mitzvah, is to realize that kind of this theoretical misa is part mm -hmm. and parcel of of Shema Yisrael Hashem Elkeinu Hashem Okay, fine, good. In terms of time, oh, wow. okay, I guess we have to stop here. Some more going. Hmm. Yeah, can we just read this paragraph because it's like mm -hmm. it's just a su summation paragraph? Okay, Nimtza Klal Inyan Pasuk Rishon Shel Shmahu comes out to be that the, the, the Inyan of the first Pasuk of Shma is, the, is this, right? So, this is just a summary of what we learned. Ha'edus, the testimony, Baha'i and the admission, be Yehudis Baruch Bechol Havcha Noisov. In the oneness of Hashem, in all of Havchonis, in all of different parts of it, aspects of it, right? Which, that's the three, the three uh, Yehud, the three unifications. Kabbalas o Malchusoy, accepting of the yoke of his kingship. And also, I don't remember when he mentioned this, to be Mamlich, HaKadosh Baruch to, to um, how do you say Mamlich, to coronate Hashem over all of the, um, all of all of the creations, the gomer bedaytenu, and to conclude in our minds, li moser al kiddush shmoi. The toldos kol zeh, and the outcome of all of this, hey yisa odlin baruchu machzik, he strengthens um mamshelus yichudoi, the dominion of his oneness, al kol habria over the entire creation, vhi kona vhi shtabe koychay sara. And the lowering and the subjugating of the powers of evil, the ischazik atoyf, and the strengthening of the good, the isgabra and over another word for strengthening, the himotza is baruch labria, and a kadosh baruch becomes available for his creation. Shititolib boy that it should it should be connected with him, the tishtalein bishlei musoy and should be perfected with his perfection, the moshech haashpo hanaisenas ilui labruim. And the, the, to pull down this emanation, this ashpa, this influence that gives an elevation to sta state A to the creations, kashir hamitzdorich in the appropriate measure, veinosim bomb behirus vekidush kifianois, and to be given to it brightness and holiness as Hashem sees fit. Okay, so that's the sum total that is accomplished with this one passage, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, which is a you know, a, you know, super duper powerful uh, uh, passage. Okay.